that Gandhi's views were the most enlightened of all the political men in our time. We should strive to... Hey! Composing Gloves here, and today we're doing the second video in the Maximus from the ground up inside the FL12 effects mini series inside that bigger series. Whoa, my gosh. So today we're talking about the metering, specifically the display area. It's very, very important that you understand what this means, because if you understand what this means, you can progress a lot faster, especially if you're new to this. If you're not new to this, this is just really important to know what stuff means so that you can say, oh, that's what that, that's what that line meant. And then you can begin to make the number of decisions based on visual data and audible data. Now, some people argue, oh, you should only use your ears, but your ears Sometimes you have to guess and it's really important sometimes that you're not guessing and it's just a great learning tool So I, I am heavily on the ear side, but I also see the point of having meters. So Yeah, anyways, that's just a little a little bit of the philosophy of why this might matter to you now Let's uh, let's come on here as I, I we're just gonna work our way across I'm not gonna deal with anything in here because it's just not necessary for this and we have the speed and we're gonna go over the bands and monitor. Bands will be covered in more detail in coming tutorials. So in fact, I'm gonna leave the bands alone. So we need to talk a little bit real quick about the routing in Maximus to understand our meter metering completely. So a compressor has two things that come into it. It has one signal that detects the that is a detector telling it, oh, should I act on this audio or not? And then it has another signal that is the audio that is being acted upon. Now, Maximus is a multiband, so it splits it. So audio comes in, and this is called your pre-audio in Maximus. This is what your pre-knob is for. This is the audio before it even hits anything. This is the level of your pre-audio. So it gets sent in, and then you're able to mess with it using Maximus on your low, mid, and high bands. There is a mix part that gets branched off and sent around this process. This is your low, mid, high mix. So you're able to mess with the audio in these three bands. Don't worry, we'll talk about this in future tutorials, but you just need to have your, a little bit of signal flow in your head right now. So it goes around and then these three bands get summed and it gets summed with the mix. So this mix, that's why it's a low, mid, high mix, not a just a mix knob. Because it goes still through the master band. So they all go through the master band. And the master band has its own pre-knob. So after it goes through here, you could see it, you could see the pre on your master band. So if you want to know what your bands are doing to your signal without seeing what the master band is doing, you want a metering option that will allow you to see the pre-band on your mastering on your master band. And then it gets sent out doodle data to doodle daddle to your audio to you know your ears, your speaker, whatever else you have in your signal chain. So that is how the signal flow works on a very basic level. Now, we'll be dealing with that and see things come up as a result of it later on. But let's go ahead and dive right into uh, the metering. So here, if I play it back, you see it moseys on across my screen. I can left click to pause it, or I can right click to change to my band display if I so desire. Now I could change the speed of how fast this moseys across my screen. It has no impact on the audio, just an impact on you know whether or not you have enough time to see it. So you can go really fast, or you go really slow. And you see it just by moving the speed. And it has no impact on your audio itself. Now one thing that you, that's kind of weird that you may discover is you can move controls and watch the various graphs and metering options you have react to those movements. That doesn't mean anything because it always happens when it's silent, but it's a sort of an interesting deal. I don't know enough about coding to make any cool inferences right now about it, but I know there's like a separate UI update that it has to run through on the algorithm. So it's very fast. I don't know. I don't know. That's, that's too far. So let's go back to basic metering. So, okay. If I turn this off here, you will see that we have, you will also see that, did it just pause? Yeah, pause. So it'll pause at some points. Sometimes it runs right off your screen though. I don't know how to control that. Like if we go on really fast and do this, Look at that, it just whoop, leaves my screen, but if I let it just roll on across, there must be like some sort of a time buffer that says after this amount of time, stop moving or something, because I don't know how it works. But you see here we have this, now it's purple. We have this purple audio running across our screen. Now, before we look at this audio, we should be aware of what this thing is graphing. It's this graph 
on the x-axis is time. So we see time and it moves across time. And then we have on the y-axis, we have our amplitude. Now there's a weird thing they've done here. I have no idea why they chose to do this. You'll see we have negative 18, negative 12, negative 9, negative 6, and negative 3. And then this is 0. They, they didn't mark 0. They have a line for it. And it's very, it's a very light gray line. I wish it was a little more obvious, but it becomes obvious when you turn on other options. So maybe that's what they were thinking. So that's all fine and dandy. This is running off DB full scale on your system. So if you don't know what DB full scale is, Digital Audio Basics uh, will tell you what that means. And then if we go up here though, look at this, negative three, I mean three, positive three, six and nine. This is not equivalent to what's going on down here. So as soon as you make a change, if we were to, if we were to move one of our, let's turn on the white line. Check this out. If I move it down, look at the rate of change that's going. Now I'll move it up with about the same speed and intensity. And look at this. It goes up way faster. Look at that. That's ridiculous. That's much, that goes up way faster because it's three and nine is the same distance here between three and 18. It's a, uh, I didn't, I, I'm eyeballing it right now, but it looks very similar in distance. I don't know why they would choose to do that. You, you know, you got me, but it is out of whack. Look at the distance between three and six here and three and six here. It's bigger, uh, substantially bigger. So you got to be careful when you're reading, using your meters Generally, you're going to be working below the line, so you can form a reference below the line, but be careful about forming a reference above the line. Now, I just got done talking about earlier about input, input audio. So audio is coming into Maximus, and it has to, like, you know, analyze what that, how loud that audio is before it does anything to it. So it's purple, and it matches your pre-knob specifically for this reason. So this is, you know, it performs a multi-band analysis because it gets split, and each band has to do this for itself. And then, of course, the master is after it's, after it's been summed after these three bands. So, whoops. And so what we have here is the audio that it sees before it's done anything. So this moving around gra our graph or any other controls will not affect how this audio is seen. If we were to do this, you see it, it does not change. Or let's, look at that, I just got rid of it and it did not change. No changes are happening to our audio. So it's pretty a pretty straightforward thing. Now, and then the master though, you'll see the master was changing. Look at that, the master was changing all over the map because again, that is after it has been affected by the master. Now, what, why would this, I mean, by the high band, because it's getting summed again. So we're good there. Oh man, I got something weird in my chest. Okay, so why would we want to manipulate the, the pre band? So, one reason is well, first off, you could just control general volume levels of a band. But another reason is if you play down a point and you say, I want to expand everything past this point, and you could turn, uh, let's say your pre is, is too low. Your audio is not loud enough. Actually, it may. No, it's loud enough. So turn it down. And let's say, oh crap, I want it to be able to get to there. Well, you can turn it up before it hits anything else, before it hits your compressor. Because if you're trying to turn it up in post, uh, you would, let's say that you were compressing it heavily and it was not receiving enough compression. Well, we'll talk about this later, but let's say you're doing something like this. Well, if you turned up your pre. It's going to ram it through there, and that's that's what we're talking about. That's what we want, right? We want it to get receive more of our compression or whatever shape we have here. But if we turn it up in post, it's simply going to turn up the audio after it's been affected. So if your audio ever only ever reaches like up to here, which is what it's doing right now because our pre is really low, and we turn it up, we're going to get that really squashed version turned up. So we, we don't want that. A lot of these things will become way more intuitive as we're going. But let me give you one more example. So what I'm saying is, see how it's coming up? And let's say that we want it to reach this expansion part. We want the volume to, well, it's still compression, just less violent compression. So if we were to turn the pre up, we can reach that part of our envelope. But if we were to turn the post up, we just turn up this, the squashed version or whatever, you know, whatever this is here, and we turn it up louder. So that's the big difference in our pre allows us to do stuff like that. Another issue you may have if you're doing like live tracking of, you know, instruments, 
shocker then you may uh the instrument may be too hot the signal may be too you might have something coming in too loud uh, you would you deal with this issue though before you got to maximus but you could put a pad on it so that the compressor does not react so violently this may become important for specific types of processing you do with maximus but overall i don't need to touch the pre knob that much but that's what the pre knob does and understanding which gain knob you're touching matters like a lot i will touch the pre sometimes for specific envelopes and when you're mixing you you kind of have to remember what kind of moves you make because if you do what i do on my mixing stage i turn everything down and then turn it all back up and if i've relied on maximus for sound design the level that it hits my compressor as you just saw is greatly going to influence whether or not it does what i want it to do so you got to be aware of that when you're mixing as well now let's talk about uh, let's talk about the next option. So that's our input band. It's been pretty thoroughly covered. It's pink. That's pink. Good, good deal there. If I turn on the green, that is our output volume. So this is our output volume. It allows us to see what is happening after it has gone through the bands. And so if you put now that that's pretty self-explanatory, like it's really easy. So if I make a change, you see no audio comes through. Let's say I do something like this. So you see, it's easily represented here. It is showing me exactly what the band is doing to my signal. So that's like, I usually have this one on. Now you have a cool option where you could see pre the pre-band and you could see the output where they're overlapping. It turns white. I'm not sure if that's because the colors combine or if that's the program. I don't know the color wheel good enough. But anyways, they turn white where it's overlapping. And if you see green coming up above your pre, you know you've sort of done something expansion or whatever if you've gone below if the white line is down here that means the green is all the way down here this is the green so we've severely compressed our original audio so that is what that means so that's a useful way of looking at these and saying how how did it affect my levels we'll talk about the implications of compression and what they do to your signal later we're just looking we're just learning what the metering does how to look at this metering so yeah th this is a very very important concept now let's move over here to this uh purple band previously i thought that this purple band uh, wasn't that big of a deal but it's a band analysis band if you look up here it says show band analysis so as you go across you can see what the different bands are analyzing on your audio and what this refers to is these attack release and sustain controls so if i move this around you see nothing happens it's, it's reading my pre but what this what this will show you is uh, based on the relative. So if I turn on my input, you'll see that it, uh, it at default reads my input. It just shows me basically my input. But if I move my attack setting and release setting, and now you should know about compressors because I've made that a thing. What is compression? I think it was called compression for beginners, that video. So as I move it up, move my release up, you'll see how the lines are originally much more rigid. Well, now... Let me see if I can make this taller still. You see, now it's become a very general thing by moving these con these controls around. So it's, uh, yeah, we're going to be talking about this later, but that's what that's showing you. It's showing you the compression envelope. So it's saying, oh, I'm compressing. I'm not compressing. I'm compressing. So here it says, oh, peak. And then, oh, peak, you know, it's, it's detecting things and showing you exactly what the band is doing to your signal, how much compression it is applying. On your output meter, you can see it as well being applied. So if we turn our attack up, so it'll instantly attack anything that comes in. And then when we turn our release way up, so it'll stay low for a long time. And then we even turn our sustain up. You will see the, the type of band it will be doing. Now this does not reflect what's going on over here. This will show you what kind of shape it will apply. And you can affect this shape with the different curve settings. And what's interesting about this is uh, they're very, they're subtle changes, but as you see here, there was a little up thing here. Now it's no longer there. If we were now to affect it with this, this curve will show us how that change here is going to be applied here. So it's a very important concept that one is, but 
Uh, ironically, this is not a band I use all that much because you just sort of have an intuitive grasp on how these controls work. And so I've always kind of run off that. But this graph is a phenomenal for learning how the shape affects your sound. So we'll be looking at that later. We get into compression and after we've covered this madness because it is quite mad. And let's move over here to the this guy. So this is the, it says up here, show band gain envelope so you'll notice that the band game envelope will always reset to the zero value and again remember the offset we have here i don't i don't know why that's there so this band gain envelope will show you band offset relative or gain offset relative to this line here so this line here is where it starts relatively it does not mean that your audio is reaching here if i turn on my input peak and my output peak you'll see neither ever reaches up there so if I move a band around though, let's say I add some expansion to my band, you will see it goes up quite drastically. And that's just, I'm adding that much gain. So here I've added over nine decibels of gain. So it's gone up that, that far. And if I look at my master band, you'll see that it, the nine decibels of gain, it was originally sitting around, was this, was this the original peak? So I've boosted it quite substantially. Now, if I were to take it down, now this is expansion, so it's not the same as just a straight boost, which is why it didn't peak. If I were to go and boost my post, you will see that this also affects my change. And we'll talk about post in a little bit, but this is basically the volume control after it's been affected by the band. We've already talked about this. I don't even know why I think I haven't talked about it. We've talked about it. So you see that, see how squashed that one sounds? And you can see that that, that is much different than expansion because expansion will treat it as an envelope we'll talk about that whole thing later but this one will just boost the whole friggin signal and now we hit the wall that that is equivalent to a 9 db increase and we will just bang so you see three uh, so here's a difference of three six nine which is exactly where we, we peaked we are actually a little bit above nine because our thing's above nine but that's what's going on there so this is what so that's what that shows us. And if we apply compression settings and stuff, it'll start to become a lot more nuancey. We'll see lines and junk come on if we turn our release back and our system back and you could see its gain offset becomes a lot more like defined and stuff. This may be a bad thing. Usually if things look this way, there's probably distortion going on. So you want to be careful about how that what's going on there. Now let's go on to this. This is the same thing as the white one, only it shows you a multiband analysis. So it'll show you what your high, mids, and lows are doing independent of each other. And they all start on this line that the white line starts on unless you've set an offset to them. So right now I'm looking at my high band. I have no idea where my high band is down here, but if I were to move it around, and let's say I move this around and move this around, and then look at it, look at, uh, oh, it's because I have the, I don't have it on yet. Okay, so there we go. There's the multiband analysis. And you can see that I have my red here. And that's, so it's showing me the relative gains I've applied. So I've boosted my red, which is exactly what's going on. If I look at my mids, it says, oh, you've cut your mids, which is exactly what we did. And then it'll apply this separate settings here which we will get to later but it's basic compression settings and then the master band of course is the green one. Oh, you know what that's why it's green i can't believe i didn't make this connection before it's green because the freaking master band is green that's why it's green that's the final thing that goes out that's got to be it so that's why it's green okay i can't believe i didn't make that connection before okay so now that, that's what that does. So it's the same thing as the white band, only it shows you the gain offset relative to that. Now remember, don't be tricked by the fact that this is bigger. I, I just keep, I want to keep emphasizing that because it's weird. And it, it's over here too. It's like, oh, why'd they do that? I don't know. And then may, maybe it was, maybe it was a weird technical issue. I, that must have been it. Because to me, it makes more sense to be symmetrical, you know? That way you can compare your up and down and it's linear. Maybe they were thinking non-linear. Maybe they were thinking like logarithmic. But I don't think this is logarithmic. So it's like, I don't know. So lastly, we have two colors. We have our purple and our blue. That is our post and our pre-level. So we've already talked about that. So this is not like new. This is like whatever. This is just your master level. So it's like a general boost to the overall frequencies in that band. So that's what's going on there. So you see, usually they're here by default, but maybe you pad it and then you turn it up later, applying just general compression techniques and stuff. So it's all up to you. You'll notice that we have these lines here that run across. If we put down a point, 
but you can see exactly where this point is over here as you move it around, which is which is a new update, by the way, and it's outrageously useful. This is so helpful being able to do this. So kudos to ImageLine for adding this. This is like a phenomenal thing to have. And if you right click, I don't know why I select delete and sometimes it doesn't delete them, but you can also select and you just hit D and it will delete it too because D has been underlined indicating that it is a shortcut. The other shortcut is the C for copy value. I don't know why they didn't do shortcuts here. Maybe just because there's so many similar letters. They're like, nope, that's not going to work. So, okay. So, yeah, so you could set things. So, if you're setting a threshold, this is very phenomenal for just like general compression and stuff. You'd be like, oh, here's my threshold. It's at almost minus nine. So, la 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 la. And then you could see up here, you're at minus six. It'd be cool if they had a vertical line that showed up on the vertical on this graph. So, you could see exactly where you were. That'd be cool too. But uh, yeah, I guess one update at a time, right? So, that is the band analysis. That's, that's, there's a couple other things. So if we come over here to bands, you can see your bands. We're going to be talking about this later, but you see there's a 20 hertz, 20K, and you can set your bands here. This will be covered in very much more detail in a future tutorial. And finally, we have our, uh, our spectrogram. So your spectrogram will automatically go to your mode, but if you're familiar with the band mode, but if you're familiar with the parametric EQ2, it works on the same principle. So if we play our signal... And what is the deal here? Did I, uh, oh, I've done weird compression stuff. I forgot. Okay. So if we play our signal, you could see it being represented here. Now I don't have a way to pause this, but you can left click, I mean, what is that? That's right click. You can right click to change between the displays, shortcut. And what's cool about this is you have, so you have your 20 hertz to your 20K, you can see your frequencies show up here. Wrong control. So you can see your frequencies show up here. The brighter a band is, so you just turn it off. The brighter a band is, the louder that frequency is. So you see the frequencies showing up as these little, these little dots or li lines, dots, lines, whatever. And so, yeah, it's very similar to the EQ. And so you can see exactly how to place your bands or maybe do your low cut so that you can get the, only the frequencies that you want. So very helpful for when you're doing stuff like that. It is also kind of useful when you're looking at how your signal is being affected by this. So if you're like, say do something like that, turn on a spectrogram versus something like this. See, it's like, it reflects those changes. So it's at the end of your chain. I believe it could do multi-band stuff too. Yeah. Oh, I guess that would be evident in the final output anyway. So yeah, I'm not 100% sure where this lies in the chain, but it would make sense for me that if it was at the end, if it's got a multi-band out, that would be outrageously cool too. But if I play it and I switch my bands, it shows me that and it's only available on the band mode which indicates to me that it is since it's showing the high mids and lows that it's probably at the very end but i don't want to say anything that's like i don't know for 100 percent. anyways that's that those are the displays hopefully you've learned a lot in about how the displays work and maybe some useful ways of how to use them and interpret them because it really is quite useful as we get into this you'll use them more and more but you also begin to use this more and more and this is like insaneness right there at least I think so. Maybe you don't think so. Maybe you think it's just the common thing or whatever. You know, good for you. You have a solid grasp on Maximus. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe. Support me on Patreon because I appreciate all the support that I can get. Because then I can continue to make videos like this. And have a blessed day. And that moment too, that's a cool moment. So they, the moments are this one, that's cool, this one, that one, that's cool, and this one.